I've destructively tested more materials with some surprising results. With more materials, including 3D printed plastics, 3D printed metals, and CNC machine metals, which ones will come out on top? A little while ago, I made a video strength testing a part made from different 3D printed metals. You provided me with a lot of advice and suggestions, and now here we are with a follow-up video. This is the one ton test rig that I built in the previous video. It's unchanged aside from being a little bit pinker. Oh, and I added some smarts to provide me with more data. This time around, we have standardized test pieces to provide a better comparison between the different materials and processes. Let's start with PLA to establish some baseline data. I printed the part with three different print settings. This is what I would call a standard print with 15% infill. This is 100% infill. This is printed with maximum walls. Maximum walls was marginally stronger than 100% infill. Next up is nylon carbon fibre. I had these printed by Dave from DMardu, who uses MarkForge machines with continuous fibre capability. The parts were printed with two continuous rings of glass, carbon and Kevlar, which should make them stronger than PLA. Dave even threw in a special design to improve the efficacy of the continuous carbon. This is carbon fibre reinforced nylon with continuous glass. This is carbon fibre reinforced nylon with continuous carbon. This is carbon fibre reinforced nylon with continuous Kevlar. This is Dave's special design printed in fibre reinforced nylon with continuous carbon. Dave's design wasn't a good fit for the test rig, but the others were all more than twice as strong as the PLA. Let's move on to the metal parts. These were all provided by PCBWay, who provide 3D printing and CNC machining services. Just choose your process, drag and drop your design, choose a material and you'll get a quote back in minutes. These parts arrived about 10 days later. We'll start with aluminium. All of the metal 3D printed parts were printed using SLM machines. Next is 316 stainless steel, and this is the heaviest metal of the test bunch.
Now we're getting a bit more exotic with titanium. It's at this point that I'm now overloading my one ton test rig. With no signs of nearing the fracture point of the part, I made the call to stop the test before the rig fails. The titanium part didn't stretch at all, but this eye bolt with a 2600 kilogram brake load did stretch. Moving on to tall steel. This is a hardenable mould steel and taking your advice, I attempted to heat treat it, but I wasn't able to heat it much over 500 degrees Celsius. So let's just call it half baked. Titanium was easily the strongest, but it comes in at more than twice the cost of the other 3D printed metals. Now to the CNC machined metals, and we'll start with aluminium. To my surprise, it fractured at about 100 kilograms less than the 3D printed aluminium and with twice the elongation. The next one is 316 stainless steel. That's about 30 kilograms less than the 3D printed stainless. Now onto titanium. Whoops, that was a violent break. That is almost 500 kilograms less braking strength than the 3D printed titanium part that didn't even break. Last up is D2 tool steel. This is also a hardenable steel that I applied my half-baked heat treating process to. This one had a breaking point 300 kilograms less than the 3D printed tool steel. The CNC machined parts came in in the same strength order as the 3D printed metals did. And that's the last of the parts broken. The 3D printed metals outperformed their CNC machined equivalents in outright tensile strength. When we compare the strongest material from each class, the differences are pretty clear. And here is the strength to weight ratio of each part. More data is available on the Electrosync Patreon page.